Hi all, Mass Bar and Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this Delta Solar Inverter. It is the product name Solivia 3.0 TR from Delta Power Supplies, as we probably know from various servo power supplies and industrial power supplies. Let's tear it down. It is pretty clear that this is another scrapyard victim. On the front here we have a Operation Earth Fault and Failure LED and a display, some navigation buttons, the name. On the connector side we can see we have what seems like three different strings. We have a DC disconnect switch, USB connection, AC output and we have Modbus interfaces RS485. On the marking plate we can see that it operates at up to 600 volt DC on the strings and at up to 17 amps per string. On the Main side, it's only a one-phase unit, 230 volt AC, uh, delivering up to 15.5 amps, 3000 volt ampere. Made in Slovakia, designed in Germany. Let's see what's inside. Oh, there is a connecting cable for the LCD and the USB. A lot shielding around the inputs. We have two inductors sitting here, so um, probably a two-string voltage inverter or the whole um, neutral split-point inverter, that could be as well. We have some TO247 devices sitting here, 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 over there and over here. We have what could be an isolation transformer could also be used for the voltage regulation. We have a DC bulk bank and then we have the one-phased, single-phased output inverter sitting over here and we have output filtering. Then there is some kind of control board sitting over here. So yeah, let's just get this uh, taken more apart and yeah, as you can see, that the, it really took a good smash at the, at the junkyard. There's pieces of the ferrite core here everywhere. I won't exactly say that this is easy to service because a lot of screws uh, is covered by components down here at the bottom and especially this Modbus interface that was really really hard to get out without breaking it. So let's start out over here. This is the card connecting to the Modbus. We have a single small microchip controller sitting there. Let's take a look at that afterwards. We have another control board sitting over here which is most likely the inverter controller. Not much to say about it. Seems like a single controller board. And then we have this mess. Let's see if we can get it out. I just have the output inductor still connected. Okay, let's try again. All right, there we go. So now that we have the bottom here, this were our DC input. We have what seems like a yeah, it's not even half reds. That's two ITPTs in parallel, each their diode, or maybe that's just the common ground, and then they have each their positive from the strings. Then we have a most likely a half reds. As you can see, there's actually room for being a parallel half reds. So this is a smaller model where only two of the ITPTs and MOSFETs are mounted. Over here is the perhaps voltage regulation inverter. Over here we have a most likely full bridge output to single phased AC. And we have the hole for the output inductor and we have the filtering. So if we take a look at this from the other side, we got mouths, inductors 
and capacitors for filtering. We have some fuses sitting here at the input. Then we have 65C 607G MOSFETs and two smaller diodes sitting here at the voltage regulation inverter. Then I, we, oh, that's just, yeah, I'm actually not sure. Uh, because over here we have an isolation transformer, but we also have a half bridge sitting before that, which is 65F, 6080, also Infineon parts as these are. So it's all 600 volt rated parts and at some, yeah, 30 or 60 amp. Then on the secondary side of the isolation transformer, we have ST Electronics, STH 30T06, which is most likely Schottky diodes, which of course rectifies before entering the DC link bank sitting over here. The output inverter is two different parts. Here on one side, we have 6R07C6, most likely MOSFETs. And then we have a K75T120. Seems like uh, we have some uh, 600 volt parts and 1200 volt parts. That's a bit peculiar, but we can also see here on the driving electronics that the, this is two different um, inverters, or at least the layouts. We have a lot more capacitance sitting here. On the output side, we have some more filtering. We have some relays sitting here and here. Oh, that's probably a current transformer. Lots of output inductor. And then the connector. And again, filtering L and C on the mains connection. And as somebody commented on the latest solar panel video, that the EMI filter sitting both at the panels but also at the mains is of course not only to protect the inverter from noise outside or light, lightning uh, on the solar panels, this is of course also to be EMC electromagnetically compatible. It's not just a resisting EMI, you will also have to live up to certain limits and not expose EMI out on the mains or through your cables to the solar panels. Because if you think about it, all the wires running up to your solar panels, that's actually quite a big antenna if you were radiating switching noise back that way. So that's also a reason why we see quite beefy filters on the input side from the photovoltaic panels. Let's check out some details. Look at those nice gold-plated fuses. Mm. Here we have a voltage sensing circuit. You can see a lot of serious resistors to measure the high voltage on the PV strings and also some rectifiers before that. We have a small housekeeping power supply, which is delivering a isolated voltage for the driving circuits here. The inverter driving board seems to be a S320F28 microcontroller. And other than that, we can as safely assume this is analog to digital conversion from different measuring points and again, some uh, digital to analog outputs for driving the inverter itself. Web server board here uses a microchip, 18F45 microcontroller and another TMS 320F28, just a larger model. Then we have some optical isolation at both the input side and output side. So what do I take away with me from this? A nice Knauf switch. No, oh, that's a Kraus and Neymar switch. Nice quality. So that's, uh, I think this is the thing. Perhaps a few of the IDBTs, uh, but other than that, not much, to, not much to reuse from this unit. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope that you will not experience taking one of these apart to repair it because you're most likely going to damage something in the process. Please like and subscribe to my channel, leave a comment if you want. Until next time, see ya!